Hello and welcome to another bad comic review. This time we are looking at Action Comics 989. This is part 3 of the Oz Effect, part of DC's Rebirth stories. And this was written by Dan Jurgens. Uh, he also did art breakdowns. And Victor Bogdanovich did pencils. And the inks were by Bogdanovich and Trevor Scott. Color by Mike Spicer. Rob Lay did letters. I thought the colors were pretty good actually. Very good shading techniques on a lot of these. But the art is garbage. I don't like Victor Bogdanovich's art. I think it's very lazy looking and this, it continues quite frequently throughout this issue. At least he could draw the female form fairly decently, but the faces are all messy and very, 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 very manga style and not in a good way in all the worst aspects. So Lois Lane is at the Daily Planet with Jonathan talking to Perry White and Jimmy Olsen when a mad bomber comes in inspired by an Oz associate. Superman is still at the Fortress of Solitude talking with Mr. Oz and Oz is showing him all these tragedies that are going on and they're all the same ones from last issue they're just slightly escalated now so Superman flies into action after a little bit of a brief conversation he doesn't know about the gunman at the Daily Planet who's got the suicide vest and Steve Lombard tries to jump into action but quickly gets shot Lois Lane says I'm a reporter you can trust me there's no fake news here and he falls for that for some reason meanwhile in that made up African country that's in the Civil War they decide to launch chemical weapons, butcher their people, thanks to the inspiration of an Oz agent. Superman disables the mortars and the gas, but it causes retaliation from the other side, escalating that civil conflict even further. Meanwhile, the gunman at the Daily Planet activates his vest and somebody flies through to save Lois, but it's not Superman. It's actually a pretty interesting aspect to the story. Uh, Superboy flies into action and does nothing. He's like, I'm putting on my costume and he flies up to the Daily Planet's roof and just kind of stands there for a little while. So there's a conversation between Oz and Lois Lane and then Oz goes up to the roof and talks to Jonathan. Jonathan is teleported to the Fortress of Solitude while one of Mr. Oz's minions starts up some sort of machine and Oz talks to Jonathan about this magical place where he wants to take everyone, a place called Bliss. And the issue ends right there. Now overall, this was kind of a middle story. It was a little bit meandering. It's a lenticular cover one, so at a $4 cover price, I don't think it was worth that. A lot happens in the issue, and elements of it were really good, but it was definitely a weak issue. This whole thing with all these things going on at once, a lot of it feels very heavy-handed moralizing, just like part one. It's not as bad, but it could have been a better issue if they would tone that political crap down a little bit and just show a lot of chaos going on that Superman's got to deal with. Focus a little more on that with all the, all the grandstanding and moralizing so overall it was an okay issue is worth like a buck buck and a half i don't think i'd pay more than two dollars for it if i did i'd feel pretty ripped off so overall i would recommend it if you find it cheap don't pay cover price or anywhere near that for it it's not worth it overall an okay element to the story but it's not all that memorable it was a decent addition just not a necessary one and if you pick up this issue independently it's not going to make any sense but that'll do it for this one as always thank you so much for listening and supporting the channel be sure and hit like and consider subscribing so you don't miss a single episode and we'll be seeing you